Hello, it is Wednesday and welcome to the start of another weekly reading vlog. So, I am currently working on three things. The audiobook is the audiobook you guys have been hearing me talk about for a few weeks, but that is The Blade Itself, the first in the First Law trilogy. And for those who somehow on booktube have not heard other people talk about it, the way I will describe it is, you know, if you've ever played Dungeons and Dragons, you know how usually you make your own character in a vacuum and then the DM, the dungeon master, has to somehow get all the characters together. So he typically just throws you in a bar and is like, you're all in a tavern. Now you interact and go on some quest. Well, imagine if someone spent time writing a book about how they all got together. Because that's how I really feel it is. You definitely have a lot of those um, Dungeons and tra Dragons role-playing tropes here. And you definitely see where they all start separately and then how they are coming together. And some of, the, some of the characters, I think, actually are really well fleshed out and deep. And other ones are obviously sort of caricatures that you're supposed to hate. Specifically, I'm thinking Giselle when I'm saying that sentence. So you have a handful of people we've been meeting, and I'm about halfway through. And it's really nice for my walks that I've been going on. It's just, just engaging enough to distract me from how long I'm walking. I am, I am enjoying it. This is my second time through. First time, I was pretty lukewarm, and this time, I'm having... I'm having fun. So that is the audiobook that I'm working on, which if you are new, I'm not as, I'm really new to audiobooks, so it takes me a long time to go through them because I just don't schedule time for them. Like I do my other things, I typically listen to podcasts or watch booktube. So, and my main priority for the week has been a memory called Empire. I started this in last week's vlog, and this is this is a space opera, and I didn't realize till I picked it up how much I've been missing that genre in my life. Not that I've read a lot of them, mind you, but it's um, space, political intrigue. You have these two cultures. You have the Empire. I'm going to put a name of it here, but I'll try and say it. It's the Texcalanli Empire, who is basically this, these people who, it's a vast empire, they keep annexing in different countries and cultures, but their culture, I think, is the most prevalent. It's not that they become a melting pot, it's that people become more like them, and they're interesting because they both show very little emotion but love poetry. So that's like a big thing in here is like, I wish I was into linguistics and poetry more because I know there are things that I'd be geeking out about. Like there's this whole glossary section with pronunciations that like I showed my linguistics friend and they were like, ooh. So that hasn't detracted from my enjoyment. I just know that I would like it more if I had that background. And then you have the stations. So we have the main point of view is through um, an ambassador from this LaSalle station. It's, I'll put that name up too. But she has been sent here because her predecessor is, I guess, missing in action. They say they need a new ambassador, and they don't know why. So she gets sent over. Now, what's interesting in this culture, and this isn't a spoiler, it's very early on in it, is they have these imagos on the station, which is like, kind of like merging consciousness. So you get someone's past thoughts and experiences put into this disc, I'm patting the back of my head because I think that's where it is. And then you, your consciousness and that consciousness kind of merge in a way so that you gain their experiences, which is really useful for things like an ambassador. So she goes to this country with her predecessor's old imago in her, and suddenly things go weird. She loses contact with him, and she's in a political situation she knows nothing about. So she has to figure out who is she trusting? What's going on? And it's really cool. I am really enjoying my hit. I think that's how you're going to say it. I know there's a pronunciation guide, but I'm just really bad at those type of things, just even in my native language. <laughs> so, but she's really cool. And there's this person, Three Seagrass, I think her name is. And she's her liaison. And I think she's just, she's just having a good time. She like loves all the drama. And I'm enjoying her perspective. And there's just, I don't know why, but whenever I put it down, I'm just like thinking about how excited I am to pick it up again. It's definitely not like light and like I'm not breezing through it, but I'm really enjoying it. So I'm having fun. 
It's like the first book I think on the short list that's really been like exactly what I wanted. So, but I had hopes for that in the sci-fi list. And then for when I still want to read, but I'm kind of tired of thinking, if that makes sense, I actually started reading Supernova, which is the third book in the Renegades trilogy. So yeah, I'm excited to be back in this world. Um, the Renegades trilogy is about a world that has always had people with superhero powers, and you have Nova and Adrian, who both have alter ego secrets. And yeah, I am excited in this book because consequences will be happening. They, they have to. There's no way. <laughs> so I don't want to spoil it because it's like the third book but I'm happy to be back there because it's just a comfortable writing style and flow I want more Adrian perspective because it's been very heavy on the Nova which I make sense but <sighs> Nova is a lot for me sometimes so that is my, my kind of longish check in here's a cat he's been my buddy so yeah Hope everyone's doing well. I will check in a bit later. I have just finished a memory called Empire. And I have a, a lot of thoughts. I think first thing is I am very solidly giving this four stars. It is a very good book. I think I had a few pacing issues with it, but I think that comes in the nature of the fact that this is not my typical storyline that I fall into. It is very politically driven, which I do not hate, but it's not like, that's not always the thing that keeps me in a story. And this was very much a story of, here is the political situation. How are we navigating it? How are we getting out of it? So that's one thing. But I really liked other parts so much. Like I really loved learning about the cultures of this empire and the station where the ambassador is from. I, I, I really enjoyed that. That was really interesting. I liked all the differences. So they were even talking about how there, so there's these things called, I think, cloud hooks. And I think it's, um, I don't actually, I don't have a good visual in my head of what it is, but you put it on your eye and I think you're connected to the network of the empire. So you can see the news feed. It's basically, you know, imagine if your phone's open all the time over your eye, which sounds kind of dreadful, but it's a large way of how these people feel connected to each other. Whereas the station, they have more like introspective connections with their like imago lines, which I mentioned in a previous clip, I think, so I won't describe those again. So I really liked that difference. I really liked these characters. I feel like sometimes in some of the more classic space operas I've read, sometimes I feel distant from characters. It's more about the ideas and the plot. But here I really felt that these characters were fleshed out. I really liked them. I had a ship that I liked. It's, you know, it was a good time. I can see why this was nominated for both um, sci-fi and debut. I really did like it. I mean, like I said, the only thing stopping it from being five for me, I think, was really just the, uh, it wasn't the storyline for me. And so that would, it would have to have been extremely amazing to be a five star in that regard. So yeah, I, uh, I had a good time. I'm glad I finished it. I, you know, there's a part of me that kind of feels like maybe one day I will reread it because I think there is a second one coming out and depending on when that is, I wouldn't mind rereading as like a refresher. I don't do that with every series I read, but I do it with a few. So yeah, those are my, my thoughts on a memory called Empire. If, if you like space operas and things like that, I think this is a really good one. It's just such a good exploration of culture about like not even just culture, but of expanding empires and what that does to people who are being, you know, annexed in. And I, I think also, though, a complaint I will say is sometimes I felt like some plot points weren't explored as enough. Like, I still have a lot of questions, like not nitpicky world questions, but there was one character that they talked about a lot that was absent the whole time, so that was weird. And also, there is like this really cool um, kind of danger um, introduced earlier, and I wish we got to explore that more, but it was kind of more used as a du ex machina sort of thing. And I don't know, people also said there was like a twist in this book, and maybe f I just didn't see it as a twist. I don't actually know what it would have been. I do know that people are right that it really does pick up speed in the last hundred or so pages, but I do think I was the most engaged 
by the first 100 just because I love that world building. It was really great. But I've been reading Supernova. This one is so fast paced. I know now that it's, I'm picking it up as like my primary, I'm going to like fly through it like probably by the time I next check in. I am 100 pages in and there are going to be consequences. That's all I'll really say. But um, in a previous vlog, I talked about how I was really annoyed how Adrian and Nova had like secrets and like no one would know about them and it created all of this like plot tension. And you know, finally we're gonna get some consequences and I am ready. I'm so ready for it. It just happened. So probably gonna pick it up after this clip. No new updates for First Law. I actually did go on a walk, but um, one of my friends needed to chat, so I chose that time to catch up with them. But yeah, so that's what I've been up to, and I'll see you in the next check-in. Hello. It is Monday. Early evening? Late evening? I don't know. It's 7 p.m. I don't really know what that means in time. I'm in a blanket because it's cold and it started to snow. Ugh. It's like not what I needed. But I figure... I really want to finish the book tonight, so this is Supernova. And I only have, I think, like 150 pages left, so I think I can totally do that in a few hours and check in. But I also wanted to record a bit before that, because things have been happening. So I think the last time I checked in, um, Nova was having some issues. And since then, <laughs> lots has happened. Um, and I'm, I, I'm really enjoying it. Um, this is by far my favorite book in the trilogy so far. I think it's doing a lot of cool things with theme and perspective. Like how you can think you are right in certain situations, but then look you know, evil to others. Like how perspective is important. I think that's really a cool theme that's been done much better in this book. I think Nova's gone through some really good growths because I suddenly don't hate her as much. Although, she had one scene where I just, I wanted to slap her. Now, it all worked out, but I still was not happy. Uh, Adrian is not as big of a player in this book, I feel, which is a shame. Like, at least he doesn't, he definitely plays a role. And he definitely, I think, is a good foil to Nova. But I just feel like he was always more grounded and less um less what's it called uh, extreme i guess Or you know he was always more moderate i think or conservative or he, he definitely just was more nuanced in his thoughts and that's i guess definitely still coming through now but it was kind of always present so i'm just i'm enjoying it a lot of plot stuff's just happened um i guess for people who have read it i just got to a part where, I'm trying to see how I can cryptically say this for lack of spoilers, but let's just say there was a press conference that went poorly. I think that's how I'll say it. And if you are unclear, you can comment below, just put a spoiler warning for other people. But yes, I'm having a great time, but I do want to finish it because I have over there a great big pile of books that I'm also eager to get to. So, yeah. So I would like to finish the night with this book. Plus... I, today turned out to be more stressful than I wanted it to be. I've been generally doing pretty well, but so there was some stress today. But luckily I got a cat, and I had brownies for dinner, because I'm an adult, and I can have brownies for dinner. So, ha ha ha. Cat. He really does not hate this. Like, don't, I hope no one thinks I torture my cat. Like, he could leave if he wanted to. Like... I, I'm only using like one arm and I'm not even like holding him like it's like a perch so anyways hope I will check in when I finish and then end the vlog then all right it is the end of the vlog and sorry about the glasses but it was late and I get headaches if I wear my contacts for too long and if I don't wear them I can't see past my nose <laughs> so sorry for the glare in them but I finished supernova it was really good I loved I did catch one of the twists pretty early on but there were other twists I did not catch so that was satisfying to be both a right and also be surprised <sighs> and oh gosh the last twist in the epilogue was just Anyways, um, 
<laughs> uh, the subscriber who recommended this to me, I think her name's Katie. Uh, you need to comment so we can talk more <laughs> about it. <laughs> but I'm really glad it was recommended to me. It was really fun. And it was so satisfying. I'm very happy. This was definitely my favorite book. I liked all the things. Ah, it was really fun. Like, perfect, fast-paced superhero content. It was great. Also, this is like, was my most underrated Christmas present. I didn't realize how much I'd love being in a blanket poncho, but here I am. It's pretty cold here in Boston, and I love it. So, to wrap up the week, I finished Memory Called Empire. Also like this, it was four stars. Great, cool space opera with really awesome world building, with also good characters, which I find I don't read as many sci-fi with amazing characters, but I really love the characters. So, yeah, I mean, the pacing can be weird. It's definitely more politically driven, but even though I'm not driven to political drama, I still really enjoyed my time with it. Like I said, Supernova, really great. Um, that whole trilogy, I, if you are feeling a good, like, fun, fast-paced, like, YA superhero thing, pick it up. It is also a YA that, like, it has romance, but it's not, like, it's not um, very... It's very high school romance, if that's what what I'm trying to say. Like, it's not going to be very intense. So if you don't like graphic romances, it's definitely not that. It's really actually quite sweet, and I enjoyed my time with it. Ugh. It's just... I'm, I, 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 just, I just finished Super Real, bro. And I was in a really bad mood earlier tonight, and now I'm just really happy. So yeah. And I also did make more progress. I know I haven't talked about it a lot, a lot in this vlog, but I have actually listened to about two-thirds of the blade itself and I'm really liking it so I described it at the beginning as like how D&D characters meet up and form a party and I'm also just really enjoying the different like things these characters are doing so Logan is this essentially barbarian from the north if you know D&D is essentially the barbarian archetype and he just ended up in a big city and the fish out of water like monologues in his head are giving me life. It's great. Um, Giselle is this really pompous, rich asshole <laughs> who is he's just a woman. He's the worst. He is the worst. But he actually is like showing growth, like tiny growth. Like now he has a voice that tells him when something's wrong and ignores it. But he has a voice. So growth. Little, little growth. Um, honestly, Glock is kind of perfect. Like, Considering who he is, he's he's perfect. Like, I I appreciate him and his insights. I I just, you know, if Glockta can do it, I can do anything. That's really where I'm at at the moment with him. Who else do I want to talk about? Uh, I don't really care about Baez. He's like the wizard, but like, honestly, he's kind of like a jerk. Like how I feel all wizards are. Like, let's be real. I love Dumbledore. Gandalf's pretty cool, but they're kind of always like not as useful as they could be where they're like keeping secrets and it's just annoying, but they're always good. And this one's just kind of snarky and an ass, so I kind of like that. Yeah, don't know much about Pharaoh yet. She's um a character who's gonna represent, I think, the South, the Southern region, and like what happens in that culture with slavery and things like that. So I am really enjoying it. It's a good audiobook for my kind of go outside and walk for an hour or so things. It's like, it's just engaging enough but also, oh, since it's dialogue or heavy, it's good for me for audiobooks. I think I prefer dialogue in my audiobooks so far. I mean, I'm still very new at it. But yeah, so that's what I read this week. It was pretty good. I hope to read maybe more next week because I have a few smaller books. I realized that I think I probably read, in physical reading, probably close to a thousand pages. And I think two of the books I want to pick up this coming week are only 300 pages each, so I feel like I can get through a few more. So yeah, it was pretty good. Sorry I don't have a cat to end the vlog. He's uh, over there being kind of a butt. So yeah, it's really weird seeing the rings in the eyes. But that's the end of this vlog. Hope you are having a great time. If you've read any of these things and want to talk about them, you know, comment down below. If you like this video, give it a like. And, you know, just, you know, subscribe if you want to see more of this. But otherwise, 
I hope at least you smiled a tiny bit while watching this. Have a great day. Bye.